Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. I hope you're having a good day. Hope you're having a good week. You know, the temperatures are changing. Seasons are changing, at least where I live. I guess if you're down in the deep south, it's still pretty hot down there. But not up here. And I just hope that you are imagining the blessedness that can only come from the creator of this universe. And that's what I'd like to kind of talk about today. From Jeremiah chapter 29. We find these words beginning in verse 12. Jeremiah says, in those days, when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 12, 13, and the first part of 14. So let's look a bit at these words. In those days when you pray, I've said it before, perhaps you've heard it, perhaps you remember it, maybe it's for the first time. Prayer is nothing more than talking with God. Doesn't matter where you do it, doesn't matter how you do it, doesn't matter what position you do it. You can, heck, you can even pray when you're driving. I just don't recommend you closing your eyes, though. That's probably not a good plan. Prayer is talking with God. And some people say, well, I don't know how to talk to God. Yes, you do. You really do. You just never thought about it. And the point is, how do you talk to a good friend? You know how to do that, don't you? <clears throat> Surely you have a good friend somewhere. If you don't, maybe you did in the past. Maybe you remember in childhood. However you talk to a good friend is the same way you talk to God. You share your deepest thoughts and the person listens. And you know that that person will never betray your confidence or betray your concerns. <clears throat> so it says here, when you pray, I will listen. You know, it really doesn't get much simpler than that. God says, when you pray, I'll listen. Isn't that why we're praying? We want God to listen. We want to, we want something from him. If nothing else, then to be assured that he hasn't gone off to play golf somewhere or tennis. You know, God says, if you pray, I'll listen. I mean, what more could you ask for? What he goes on to say, if you look to me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Where's God? Where do you think he is? A lot of people think he's up in heaven. Some talk about the man upstairs. I might be there. He's also with his creation. And who or what is his creation? The forest, the trees, the mountains, the streams. And also you. Did you ever realize that you were God's highest effort in creation? That's why man got created last. You are the ultimate expression of who God is and what God wants. And this passage says, if you look to me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Finding God isn't that hard. Oh, maybe it takes a little practice because we've got all these notions in our head about who God is and who he isn't and who I am and who I'm not and Somehow we get the notion we have to be special to come into God's presence. But 
you don't. You do have to come wholeheartedly. You can't come with a secret agenda. You can't come with a sense of manipulation. If you'll do this, I'll do that. Many times God answers that prayer, but then the person doesn't do their part. We have to come to God because we want to, not because we have to. We have to respond to God's love because we want to, because it changes our lives, not because somebody said so. Rigid rutination of following God gets you nowhere. It just does not allow you to know God. You know, memorizing passages in the Bible is a great thing. But there's a big difference between knowing the Bible for the sake of quoting scripture and knowing the Bible for the sake of knowing the one who wrote it. See, everything in the Bible is geared towards you and me walking with God. It's not just an intellectual process. It's a wholehearted process, as it says here. And then finally, he says, I will be found by you, says the Lord. This is a statement of fact. It's a statement that circumvenes any circumstance. It's a statement that overcomes any difficulty. It's a statement that lays it flat out in pure, simple language. Now, I didn't say English, but I'm using English, of course. It was originally written in Hebrew. Most of us don't speak Hebrew, so I'll leave it at that. <laughs> but it's very, very simple. Why do we want to make it so complicated? Why do we want to add the ifs, ands, and buts? Why would anybody try to explain away something simple that God has said? I will be found by you. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. If you pray, I will listen. My goodness gracious, you can't get a better formula than that. I mean, I can promise somebody I'll be there, but I don't have the ability to control everything so that I really am there. But God does. I can promise my help in some task, but if I get hurt, I won't be able to do that. God never gets hurt. He's always there. You see, this passage talks about how much God, the creator of the universe, wants you to be friends with him. It's not God's option. He's made his statement. He's made his position clear. That's what he wants. What do you want? What do you really, really want? Well, I hope you'll think about it. I hope you'll find him. I hope you'll look for him. And I know you'll find him. Well, thanks for listening. If you have a prayer concern or a need, please, please let us know. We'll do everything we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. God bless you. Have a great day. I'll talk to you again.